After a very productive summer season in the garden, it was time to take our last harvest and pull out those summer crops ready for a winter garden. It might be time to unleash the goats. Yeah. Well, that's not too bad because we've probably eaten half that again. Mm -hmm. Wasn't bad for a little little plot of corn. Mm. This garden was 50% success, 50% failure. It was success in that it grew so well. It was a failure in that the planning went out the window with the sort of, there was a mouse eating our corn and we just got what was going. The cucurbits didn't grow as well as we'd hoped at initially, so we put more in and now look at it, you can't even walk in here. So we, um, we lost control of this garden, so that was the failure and the success is there's still a lot of food here. Like this big pumpkin here. Mm, oh, there's butternuts. There's mm. a, that's, a, that's definitely a pig butternut right there. It's never going to get much more than that. <laughs> Look at, oh, mm. had a scar. It doesn't care. I like those purple ones, the purple ones with the white flesh. They've done good. These are, yeah, these are really, these are nice sweet potato. Yeah. And you know what? No sign of um, worm or grub or anything like that has attacked them, so that's really nice. Mm. Not, not super extensive, but again, if we'd... Um, we'd only put one runner in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. If, as it went along, like if we um, if we grow them next time in a, in, a, in their own bed, you can sort of bury them as they go, and they'll, they'll mm. do this. But that's, I guess that's enough sweet potato for us. Mm -hmm. This was I only really wanted that as a ground cover. Yeah, that's, we ended up with food. We scored some very nice sweet potatoes out of that. Things come out of these gardens pretty cleanly, huh? Yeah. Look at that, That's, they're just sitting on top. Mm -hmm. This is really good. To preserve our corn harvests, we remove the kernels from their hulls and pack them into vacuum seal bags to be frozen and stored for later use. By mid-April I had decided to transform this garden into an alien bed and whilst I still had some tomato and jalapeno plants to remove, I had space to start planting out my garlic. I planted two different varieties that were given to me by friends who grow garlic organically in the area. Off camera I also planted some onion seedlings given to me by our neighbour. On the new moon I measured out seed blocks to plant some more onion seeds and a range of flower plants for winter and early spring blooms.
Back in the garden, it was time to pull out the jalapeno plants and try out a hot sauce with the remaining fruit. We torched the jalapeno chilies exactly the same way we did our peppers in the summer. Allowing them to sweat in a container with their charred skins imparted a lovely smoky flavour to the partially cooked chilies. Here I am adding the sweated and skinned chilies to a saucepan of finely diced onions. I then added some apple cider vinegar, salt, lime juice and hot English mustard and stirred everything together, cooking it all down over a low heat on the stove. Once reduced down, I filled warm sterilised jars with the hot sauce. The time has come to pull out the tomato plants or the rest of them, the ones that remain. We're actually in May now, so it's the third month of autumn. I'm actually surprised how long we've had these plants in the ground for. We planted them in December, the first week of December, and then we've been getting fruit off them since February. So it's been really great. Production's definitely slowed down now. It's not really getting much warmer than 21 degrees um, now, and it's really cold in the morning. So it's only really warm in the afternoon. And the next few weeks are gonna be really quite cold. We might get frost and also we're gonna get a lot of rain. So it's time to, pull these out and put some winter crops in. Um, mainly this bed, I'm just following it with onions and garlic. Already the garlic that I planted two weeks ago has popped up, which is really great. And the onions, some of the onions that I put in um, three weeks ago are doing well. I, they haven't really grown much yet, but I think they got a bit of transplant shock. So we'll see how they go. I think this cold, um, rainy weather will be good for growth. Below me here, the basil is starting to really struggle with this weather. It really likes the summer weather. I'm going to harvest it all now and make a big batch of pesto and put that all in the freezer. Um, and then we can pull that out for something um, basil -y in the in the winter time. So we love pesto. It's really versatile. So if I harvest all this, it's going to be a good supply of pesto for the rest of the year until we can plant it again in spring. Big plant. Look at my root mass, isn't it? Good, isn't it? Yeah. Nice big worm. Whoa. Not for chickens. Not for chickens. There is a lot of tomatillo. Like the sixth or seventh harvest, really. To preserve our basil pesto, I placed it in large silicon ice cube trays. A couple of blocks pulled out from the freezer should be the perfect size portion for Troy and I when we need to use pesto for a particular dish. I also did the same with some excess goat milk ready to make soap when I find the time this winter. I'm still learning how to do this, but hope to share with you my soap making experiences by the end of the year. The paperkis, the green peppers, they've been going absolute gangbusters. We didn't expect them to be going uh, well through autumn, but here we are. So another bumper harvest. I'm glad they're easy to preserve as you've seen us doing. We took the big fruit off here. There's plenty of flowers left on those plants. I don't know if they'll go again, but uh, we're just leaving them there. Ideally, we'd be able to pull everything out and just and just clear up that garden bed and plant again, but we're really, we're really trying to get the most out of it and just running a few experiments. So 
Really great, really good result. So abundant. Look at that thing. You wouldn't think there was a path here. <laughs> yeah. So these, um, they just break off perfectly. Yeah, they're ready. Really great. We're going to have a ridiculous amount of um, butternuts. So what do you think? Pumpkins like that that are still a bit green, do you reckon that just save them for the pigs? Or do you reckon they'll harden up in the sun? I don't know. Maybe we can just leave them in the sun. I want to harden all of them off, so yeah. I'll leave them all. But... <laughs> Very strange. You can see that this section of the garden that was planted out to spaghetti squash had a fair amount of invasive onion weed popping up. So Troy decided to build another bed on top of it, putting a layer of thick newspaper down first to act as a weed barrier. Some thinly spread manure worked really well to hold the newspaper down while he went to collect some spent hay from the goat and chicken enclosures. I've been having issues with some of the hens roosting in the laying boxes at night. The silver lining is that every morning I've been able to collect a fresh lot of chicken manure for our garden when I clean them out. This is the manure that Troy is spreading here on his new bed. Real, real lots of manure. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Because it's coming off the laying box, nesting boxes every day. Oh wow, yeah. It's rich. It is rich. There's going to be like real fertile patches. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Wow. We also topped up the chicken manure with some more aged cow manure. Well, this compost that we've just taken its rain jacket off, um, it's probably about three and a half months old and it's been running really hot, like ste steaming, steaming hot. So it's finally cooled down now. At the very centre of the pile it's still just warm. Not, not uh, so hot that you can't leave your hand there, which it was. So if we um, pick this up and put it into the next bay that I'm going to build um, and we got some of this outer stuff and got it closer to the center it'll probably warm up again so it's it's not it's not really ready but um, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna throw that out and just see if it'll if it'll grow some plants we've got a fair bit of manure in that mix um, so this will still keep breaking down but I just want to run an experiment and see what it's like what results we get planting into this um, this is the this compost, how it's been made, is we've been getting the spent brewery grain, anything that we can't feed to our animals. We've been mixing it with wood chips and garden refuse. Um, nothing that would have seeds in it. And we've just mixed it all together and this has been the result. So we found the brewery waste is, is about 12 to 1 um, carbon to nitrogen, the one part nitrogen ratio, and it makes a nice hot compost. So. It's a waste product and it's one of the ones that we grabbed and, and uh, trying to find more and more uses for. So. It just smells like what you pick up on the forest floor.
that pretty much wraps up just that section. There we go, a weed-free garden. <laughs> well, we'll see. Um, so I'm just going to let this get drenched for the next two days. We've got rain coming. Um, and then after that, after the whole thing's thoroughly soaked, then we'll plant it out. But this is pretty weed-free. So hopefully we've bought ourselves a bit of time in the battle against this uh, Guilford grass that's invaded in here too. One of the ladies at the community garden had given me a bag full of purple shallots to plant out in our alley and bed. So I added these along with the already planted garlic and onions, making sure I had adequate spacing between each bulb. After three weeks sitting in the cool laundry, more than half of my green tomatoes had ripened, but they were starting to rot, so something needed to be done. Here I am explaining to you, with the microphone off, what I plan to do, which is make a tomato sauce, a green tomato chutney, and another batch of river cottage chutney. To begin, I sliced the green tomatoes thinly with a couple of onions. I then layered them in a colander, sprinkling cooking salt between each layer to draw out any bitterness and excess water overnight. Next it was time to begin the tomato sauce. I finally chopped some peppers from the garden and then chopped up all the remaining shallots I did not have space to plant. Next I added 3.5 kilos of chopped tomatoes and slowly simmered down this mixture until it was reduced by at least half. I then ran the mixture through our mooli, or Italian food mill, to remove the skins and seeds. After doing this, I realised the mixture was still too chunky for a tomato sauce, so I ran it through a fine mesh sieve, reserving the chunky stuff for pasta sauce. I then simmered the sieve mixture with some sugar, salt, vinegar, and a bag of aromatic spices, including cloves, cinnamon, and allspice. Once reduced by half, I removed the spice bag, added some paprika, and jarred up the sauce. The next day it was time to wash the salt off the green tomatoes and onions and then prepare the spices for our chutney. Here I am toasting some mustard seeds to infuse the vinegar. I also added some ground allspice and half a cup of sugar. Once that had dissolved I added my green tomatoes and onions and simmered for half an hour before ladling into sterilised warm jars. We're looking forward to trying this one with our home cured and smoked ham later this winter. When we processed our Ross meat birds in May, we also harvested five young Australop roosters that had been hatched out by our hens in summer. And here is Troy breaking them down into smaller bits for stock. Little half grown roosters. Our hens are safe again. <laughs> we'll pressure cook the stock for about two hours and um, that should come out pretty good. We've done that before and then we'll be able to can the broth in big jars and start with the next lot. Match the arrow up with the little divot. Now I'm tightening, just finger tight, no tools, <laughs> 10 pounds of pressure. So now we just have to look at the gauge and wait until it comes up to 10 pounds and then we'll cook it for two hours. Later that evening we jarred the stock and preserved it in these large 1.2 litre jars using the pressure canner. 
If you'd like to see how we do this, I've put a link on screen now to a previous episode where we canned our duck and chicken broth. We've got about 12 litres of uh, chicken broth and pork broth that we've canned up here uh, for winter. And then I also, the last of our summer produce, um, I've been making some tomato sauce, some green tomato chutney, tomato and capsicum pasta sauce. Oh yeah, and we, I tried doing some paperkis, so they turned out okay. There's a bit of an airspace here, so I'm, I'm yet to perfect that with my canning, but I've read research and it seems to be fine to have this much of an airspace, so we've got some paperki in a jar instead of having to put them in the freezer. This is my lineup for River Cottage Chutney. Unfortunately, I'm getting to this quite late in the season. It's right at the end of autumn. And I harvested the tomatillos about three weeks ago and they've just been sitting in the fridge and half of them had gone bad, which is understandable to be fair because it was the end of the season and I just never got around to it. But I have managed to salvage a kilo, so we're just gonna do a single batch. I've done, previously I've done triple batches because I've had like plenty of zucchini and plenty of tomatillos, but I've only got enough for one batch uh, this time. It is a shame that I let so many tomatillos rot, but at least the pigs will be happy. They always like um, some overripe rotten fruit. So I filled the pig bucket with the, the rotten tomatillos. So basically this recipe is um, brown sugar. I'm using Rapidure Organic Rapidura sugar. Sultanas, 500 grams. Uh, 500 grams apples, 500 grams onions, a kilo of zucchini and a kilo of green tomatoes and some 500 ml of vinegar. And then I've also got a little spice combination here of coriander, cloves and black pepper and also some ginger. So I'm just going to be putting that in a little spice bag. But basically just chop everything up, put it in a uh, um, saucepan and let it reduce down to about half until it's jammy and then you pour it into jars. It is important to make sure the rims are clean and the jars are hot when they receive the hot chutney to prevent cracking. I was told to flip the chutney or jam filled jar upside down to get a better seal by a friend. I'm not sure if it actually helps as I've had the seals fail on a handful of my jars this preserving season. Your thoughts on this technique are most welcome in the comment section below. Well, it's hard to believe that it's the second last day of autumn. It's a beautiful day, but we are expecting a, a storm this afternoon. Um, this warm, warm front is gonna bring some stormy weather with it and plenty of rain. We actually haven't had much rain at all this autumn. It's been incredibly dry. So we've been irrigating the garden a lot, but also it's very cold in the morning. So there's a bit of dew fall and things like that in the morning. So the beds have been staying um, pretty nice and moist. This bed's been a success that Troy planted. There are a few weeds, but I don't think they're actually coming up from the soil below. I think they're actually in the compost and um, in our compost and in this straw and stuff that he's mulched with. So this was planted out about three weeks ago. Um, and everything seems to be doing really well. The beetroots were in a soil block, so they didn't really get much transplant shot, which really helped with them getting established quite quickly. Actually looking around, I can see some of these plants. They look a little bit wilted because we haven't watered them today um, and it's quite sunny right now but I'm not going to water it because it's going to start raining soon so yeah that, that'll, that'll be fine and yeah we'll check in back with you later on in winter to show you how this bed's going for the rest of the like the next hour or two before it starts raining I'm going to be planting out the far bed behind me um, where there was all the cucurbits I'm going to be planting that out with onion. The garlic that we planted in this bed where there were tomatoes and peppers is doing really, really well. So I'm pleased. It's, um, it's been in this bed for about five weeks now. I planted it uh, mid-April and we're nearly at the end of May. This is going to be mainly an allium bed. Based on what I've read, uh, it's quite good to follow up salamums with 
alliums. Um, but there's also a scattering of beetroots around because we love our beetroot and we've left some of those perennial herbs in this bed. And there's still capsicums and peppers in here because the weather's been so warm, we've still been getting a harvest from them, so I've just left them in. But I suspect they'll die off pretty soon now that the cold weather's coming. <laughs> so this is pretty insane. We're still pulling zucchinis from this bed. I think we got our first zucchini in November and now it's the end of May. So it's just been such a mild autumn that some of our summer plants have just kept going for us. And we thought about ripping them out with the other pumpkin and zucchini, um, yeah, nearly two months ago. But since they were flowering and fruiting, we thought we'd just leave them. And they've kept providing us with like three or four zucchini each week. So I was sick of zucchini um, midsummer, and then it kind of, the production slowed down and now I'm really enjoying them. So I'm really grateful that we still have them in here. Um, I guess we'll just cut them away when they die. Um, so we're just going to plant the, the onions now. We're going to build up compost on top of this straw around the zucchinis. Um, yeah, and they'll be growing over winter in this row along here. And then we'll remove the zucchinis a bit later and perhaps plant something else. Oh, wow. Yep. So there's another one here that I just pulled from the, the bush behind us. So they're actually a really nice size. They're like the nice small zucchinis. I like them this size. They're sort of more manageable <laughs> and more tasty in my opinion. So it's, um, it's nice that we've managed to still keep getting a zucchini harvest. Anyway, we're going to um, try and get these onions in. Well, finish building this bed and get these onions in before the rains come. To build the onion bed, we started with spent straw from the chicken and goat enclosure, followed by this aged cow manure that Troy collected for me with the tractor. We also added ash from a recent burn off to raise the pH and add further minerals such as potassium and lime to the bed. So we've got that straw, we've put the manure on with the tractor and Troy's come and put our homemade compost on with the tractor as well. We're just spreading it now with the landscaping rate. How many inches do you reckon we've got on there? Three or four? Four inches. About four inches. Mil. Four inches. Yeah, so just spreading mm. it now and that's literally it. We're going to plant straight into that. We're going to plant um, those seed blocks that I put together about six weeks ago with the onions in them. Um, yeah, I'll just grab them now. So here's the seed blocks here. Um, they pretty much hardened off since I planted them because I've had them outside in the cold the whole time. So they haven't grown that big over the six week period, but I'm pretty sure they should kick off quite well in here. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to put them in level this all off straight into our compost. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, thanks for liking it and subscribing to our channel if you haven't already, as it really helps get our videos out to a like-minded audience. See you next time.